Boxing has gone through many civilizations to reach a more brilliant land Roman civilization. However, one significant transformation in the world of combat sports occurred. Etruscan culture penetrated Rome and made boxing evolve into a new step, pugilatus. Let's explore the journey of boxing's evolution into pugilatus in Roma, one of the most powerful civilizations in ancient times. Boxing Revolution in the Roman Era of Greece, Pugilatus Part 1. Greek boxing in the early days under the rule of the Roman Empire. In 146 BC, Macedonia became a Roman province after the Battle of Corinth. Also known as the Battle of Luca Petra or the Battle of Lefko Petra. This battle marked the end of the Achaean War and the beginning of the period of Roman domination in Greek history. The Roman Empire's rise to power saw the absorption of various cultures, and Greece was no exception. While Roman power swept across the Mediterranean, it did not lead to the erasure of Greek culture. Instead, Greek influence deepened within the Roman Empire. The ancient Greek tradition of boxing, which was a prominent aspect of their culture, found its way into Roman civilization. And it was Roman boxing continued to inherit the essence of Greek boxing. In Olympia, from 146 before the Common Era to Common, boxing was still maintained as a method of appeasement by Roman. Roman rulers recognized the importance of maintaining traditional Greek boxing as a means of appeasing and connecting with the Greek population. Thus, the Romans still hosted Olympic-style boxing competitions in the sacred city of Olympia, albeit with some changes. Greek boxing techniques and traditions played a pivotal role in shaping Roman boxing. Roman fighters began adopting Greek styles and training methods. Rules During this early Roman period, the laws governing boxing experienced minimal alteration. This consistency ensured that the noble essence of Greek boxing was preserved and absorbed into Roman boxing, leading to a fusion of techniques and refined styles that would lay the foundation for the development of pugilatus. Boxing was introduced to Rome through Greek influence, and it quickly gained popularity among the Roman populace. It was not confined to arenas, but found its place in every corner and street. Highly trained slaves were sometimes pitted against one another in circles marking the sand, the origin of the term boxing ring. Beyond its role as a sport, boxing serves a practical purpose as a Roman military training method. They train the army based on three elements, the discipline, physical fitness, and combat skills. They were highly valued by the Roman military and would later make Rome stronger than ever. And of course, boxing can only change when people's perception of it changes, perhaps influenced by another religion or another culture, such as the Etruscan culture. The Roman Conquest and the Influence of Etruscan Culture on Boxing Around from 400 to 264 BC, the Roman Conquest. In Rome, with the rising power, Rome had been steadily expanding its territory and influence in Italy during the 3rd century before the Common Era. In Etruria, Catruria was a region in central Italy, north of Rome, and it was inhabited by the Etruscans, an ancient civilization. After many long resistance wars, in 264 BC, Volsinii city of Etruria was destroyed after a slave revolt. Rome, the eventual victor in the wars, absorbed all the quintessence of Etruria's culture which was famous for its preference for strength and aggression. 
This strength and aggression would soon become a key, completely changing the direction of boxing under Roman domination. Around from 246 BC to 200 AD, influence of Etruscan culture on boxing. The Etruscans were the first superpower of the Western Mediterranean, but different from the Greeks. They derived pleasure from violent sports and rituals. A game in which a man was strapped and was sent to attack a dog with a club and a fabric wrapped around his face. He will fight until he defeats the ferocious animal as a form of religious bloodletting. This early form of gladiator fighting was later imported by the Romans into boxing and other gladiatorial games. This also introduces a new form of boxing, pugilatus. So, do you know why? because ancient civilizations like Rome were under constant threat of attack from marauding tribes. Their culture was necessarily militaristic with martial skills and strength, even ferocity being a prized attribute. Roman society sometimes considers compassion a vice, a moral defect, especially in the war to protect their home. Therefore, one of the primary purposes of boxing and other martial was to inoculate Roman citizens from this weakness. Romans instead prized virtues such as courage and conviction, virtus, a sense of duty to one's people, moderation and avoiding moderation, moderatio, forgiveness and understanding, clementia, fairness, severitas and loyalty. How does Etruscan affect boxing? The most apparent manifestation of Etruscan influence on Roman boxing was the integration of Etruscan aggression into boxing techniques. As Romans interacted with the Etruscans and absorbed elements of their culture, the combat techniques of the Etruscans became an integral part of Roman boxing. They are relentless and intense fighting style and the fervor found its way into Roman pugilism. Roman fighters, once known for their calculated and methodical approach, began to adopt a more aggressive stance and approach in the arena. This was also applied in training soldiers, strengthening the spiritual strength of the Roman army. This transformation not only altered the techniques employed, but also shifted the very mentality of Roman fighters. Etruscan influence on ancient Roman culture was profound. It was the standards of this period that led to changes in the ideals of martial arts, especially boxing. The birth of ancient Roman boxing, Pugilatus. The combination of Greek finesse and Etruscan aggression led to the birth of Pugilatus. Pugilatus emerged as a distinct form of boxing, marked by its unique blend of Greek and Etruscan influences. This new discipline emphasizes both skill and raw power. Pugilatus rules and techniques. In terms of technique and rules, Pugilatus and its Greek predecessor bore a resemblance. Weight classes were an alien concept, time non-existent. The pugilists' fists could rain blows on a grounded adversary. Kicks in both forms remains a contentious issue. Nevertheless, within the ring, there were lines that could not be crossed. Deliberate eye gouging blows to the nether regions, the ignorant act of biting. They were universally considered violations of the spirit of the sport. Gloves. The main difference between them was the gloves used instead of the hemantes. The Romans used the so-called cassest. Cassist is based on a Greek original, but the material is completely different. Instead of cowhide straps, Roman fighter gloves were made with metal knuckles that required sheepskin reinforcement that wrapped all the way up the shoulder. Besides, 
Kestis were armed with spikes or blades in other regions beyond Rome. Kestis fighters seemed to have had no form of body armor, apart from the Cestus itself. Fight Position Another main difference was the fighting position, in which the boxer stood upwards instead of bending himself. When the fight ends, the match ending was also changed. The gladiators would fight until they could no longer continue or raise their middle finger to signal surrender. This was later added for safety measures. And even when they lose, fighters are still respected for their strength and courage. And the winner will get many things. Honor, respect, admiration, and the cheers of the crowd. From the ceremonial donning of the Caestus, to the victorious laurel wreaths that adorned the champions, each element held special meaning. The role of pugilatus in Roman culture. In the bustling arenas and coliseums of Rome, pugilatus emerged as a beloved pastime, captivating the hearts of the masses with its raw display of skill and brawn. Besides, for the youth of Rome, boxing was the main method that was supposed to prepare them for active military service. In the grand theaters and dusty training grounds of Rome, pugilatus thrived as a symbol of strength, discipline, and the indomitable spirit of an empire. It is no accident that Diagoras of Rhodes was one of the most celebrated pugilists of ancient times. The victor at the 79th Olympiad is said to have never ducked, stooped, or sought to evade a single punch. Instead, the crowd favorite stood face on and took all that his opponent could throw at him while searching for his own knockout blow. You know that once someone has got to the Olympic Games, they are of a certain standard, so you just have that instant respect for them and their craft. When you box in the Olympics, there is hardly any trash talking. There are hardly any dirty stare-offs. It's just mutual respect, mutual love, because you have to respect someone who loves something you love also. This sense of dignity is one that cannot be denied. And this noble ideal is the most prominent. It will be far different from what boxing will face in the following period. It transcended mere athletic competition to become an integral part of Roman culture. However, the change of boxing when entering the Roman period was a great challenge. A challenge that could put an end to the flow of boxing history. Let's look forward to the next part. The Heroic History of Boxing Part 4 Ancient Boxing in the Roman Era 2